Hi everyone, I finally recovered from the jet lag after my big trip last month and managed to get quite a bit done on the game. I built a new machine called an Alchemizer, which took up most of my time, but also added some new features to manage employees, added a fog of war style effect to unowned patches of land, and designed a progress bar to be coded next week. The idea for the Alchemizer is a machine that takes whatever enters it and turns it into money. I'm not sure whether to call it the Alchemizer or the Amberizer. Let me know in the comments which you prefer, or if you have a better name. So I started by drawing a placeholder sprite, as I did with the splitter, which is literally just a line indicating the direction that the Alchemizer can be connected to. Once I'd set it all up in Unity, I wrote the progress method for the Alchemizer, which is a method all machines have, which describes what the machine should do each time an item enters it. It's super simple and was so much easier to write than the dreaded combiner, which I'm still having a few teething problems with. At this point, I discovered I'd lost the pen for my graphics tablet, so I couldn't actually draw the final sprite of the Alchemizer, so I decided to move on to something else while I waited for a new pen to arrive. First, I set the hire interface to generate five new employees every month, which you can see here. I then designed a button to fire employees from the lumber mill interface, as there was no way to do that up until now. As I used the same design for all the buttons in the game, I decided it was probably time to just make one that I could edit whenever I need a new button. Here you can see that having hired employees, I can then go and fire them one by one, and they each disappear from the list of hired employees. In the game, they will also disappear from the forest. It's not really a bug, just something I haven't gotten round to programming, but it's been pretty annoying since programming the basic employee, as that lumberjacks will stop working altogether if they can't find any storage to empty their inventory into. I fixed that by coding quite a simple wait command, which forces the employee to check if any new storage has become available constantly, without overworking the processor. So now, when a new storage building is placed, the employee is able to find it and empty their inventories. Still waiting for the pen to arrive, I decided to implement the Fog of War, which is essentially a fancy way of saying blacked out tiles that are yet to be discovered. How this works in the game is that any land owned by the player is displayed and any land not owned is a black void. I might at some point make it look more like fog, similar to Civilization games, but for now the void will do. This is the effect that it has on the look of the game, which I think is pretty striking. I really like how it starts as a tiny area the player can see which opens up over the course of a game. As I get on to adding more diversity to the forest and adding rare structures and random events, this should be a pretty fun and rewarding aspect and adds a bit of discovery element to the game. At last the new pen for my graphics tablet arrived, so I took a break from coding to draw the alchemizer. I did a mock-up on paper before committing to pixels, and decided to go for a wooden plank box with a glass container on the roof for the vamba, and pipes coming out the sides. I'm actually super pleased with how the machine turned out, and I really like the small details like the grass growing around the base. I'd like to animate the machine later on, with the fluid bubbling whenever an object enters the machine. I had to draw four separate rotations of the machine in total, so the drawing took a while. But I like how each rotation is unique, so the player has something interesting to look at, regardless of how they place the machine. The layout of the machines here wouldn't actually work in practice, but I thought it would look cool for demonstration. As I showed in the last video, there are actually two separate sprites involved for each rotation of the machine. A base layer, which is the conveyor belt part, which the objects go on top of, and the top layer, which is the machine building, which the objects go behind. With the alchemizer finished, I ticked it off on Trello, which is the best part of any dev's day. The final task for the week was designing a progress bar, which will be a feature on many of the machine control panels. It will act as a way to see, at a glance, any number of different statistics about a forest object. For example, how full a storage building is, how deteriorated a machine is, or how tired an employee is. I didn't write any code for the progress bar this week, but I will do in the next episode. This is what the alchemizer looks like in a working system, and you can see the money in the bottom left increasing as the alchemizers work. 
Again, let me know in the comments what you think the new machine should be called. I like Alchemizer or Amberizer, but you might have a better idea. That's all for this week. If you like the video, do subscribe as I'll be releasing videos regularly from now on. Cheers for watching and I'll see you next time.